and minimalists. Yeah, man. Well, well, I think I think it's yeah. pro- it's probably best to start by by talking about what is what what is an addiction, and and we'll, we'll also differentiate it from a few things. So, okay. um, according to the National Institute of Health, addiction is the condition of being addicted to a particular substance, thing, or activity, despite harmful consequences, and it is often characterized by an inability to stop. I had. Um, some smart alecky person on Twitter yesterday say, how can you help me stop my addiction to oxygen? I can't stop. And okay, that's not what an addiction is because oxygen itself has very beneficial properties to it. There's not um, a, an alternative. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause like I, be, before I even like, before we decided to do this podcast, I would have agreed with him. I would have been like, oh yeah, we're, I mean, you have to have oxygen or you die. Right. There are a lot of things we have to have or, or we benefit from yeah, having, we gotta ha- I benefit addic- from having a bed. I'm not addicted to having the bed mm-hmm. because there, there are no harmful consequences of having the bed. Right. And there's a piece of lint right here on your microphone oh. that we have to remove. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. I'm so, so Did I, I know, get it. I have OCD. You totally got it. <laughs> and, um, so let's talk real quick about the difference between addiction and obsession there's a lot of overlap like if you have a a venn diagram of addiction and obsession there's going to be this huge sort of overlap so okay i have this definition here i broke my computer out so that we could talk about it this is from uh, cliffside malibu which i believe is a addiction treatment center and the article here which we'll put a link to in the show notes it's called what's the difference between addiction and obsession i'm just going to read the first two paragraphs When the average person thinks about addiction, most people think about drugs, alcohol, tobacco, and maybe shopping or gambling. When a person is addicted to drugs or alcohol, they are chemically dependent on the drug. And you could say the same thing about, well, caffeine is a drug, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's weird. We say drugs and alcohol, but alcohol is just a drug. We could, we can say drugs. Well, yeah, because it's, it's a drugs, tobacco and alcohol. And those are all tobacco and alcohol are drugs. (laughs) Right. And, and those are all addictive drugs. There are some drugs, however, that are not addictive. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, LSD is a non, or, or psilocybin is, is a non-addictive drug. Mm-hmm. It does not have the same addictive properties. Now you can become psychologically addicted to virtually anything. Yeah, uh, I could be uh, uh, addicted to uh, styrofoam, uh, or to very clean microphones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that's more about obsession, which we'll dive into here uh, in, in a second. Right? People who suffer from addiction many times also have other co-occurring disorders such as obsessive compulsive disorder. (laughs) There's a strong correlation between addiction and obsessions. An obsession is a ritualistic routine that becomes part of your normal life. Medically speaking, it is a persistent occupation of a feeling or idea which can be accompanied by anxiety. And I think it's one of the reasons I'm often, my my levels of anxiety tend to be higher than yours. it has a lot to do. Uh, we both have a, addictive personalities, which we're going to touch on yeah. in, in this episode mm-hmm. for sure. Um, they manifest differently. Mine manifests often through through obsession, which is mm-hmm. this ritualistic routine or ritualistic thinking. Uh, obsessions can include a, excessive hand washing or repetitive counting. I I, I don't have obsession uh, obsessive hand washing, although um, I know yesterday. We, we were on a flight. We were flying back from Chicago, and that guy who was sitting next to me totally, like, was coughing and stuff. And mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, I'm going to ask him if he'll switch seats with you. Mm-hmm. And we, we ended up working out. But, like, I definitely went into the bathroom and washed my hands. But that, that to me, was just reasonable. I mean... Yeah, it's it, preventative. Right. I mean, dude, I, I get on an airplane, and I got those little sanitizing wipes. Right. And, like, I wipe everything down because, you know, I just... I read this article a year or so ago where they were talking about how it was like confessions of a flight attendant or something. And one of the confessions was, is those trays that come down and everything, the screens, those never get cleaned. Mm. And it's amazing. Sometimes how you take one of those wipes and you wipe everything down and it's like Mm -hmm. black almost. Yeah. (laughs) It's crazy. So, so, so yeah, it's, it's being preventative. All right. And so there's a difference between being preventative and, and being excessively preventative. And that's when obsession comes the counting thing that it mentions here. Um, that's definitely something I have and I don't 
always notice. Um, like I can tell you right now, there are 44 steps between my car, the the stairs mm-hmm. in, within the in the parking garage, and mm-hmm. the bottom floor. Yeah, like it's just something that that I don't realize I'm doing it. I'm just counting as I go. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four, five, and and I find myself counting different things from time to time mm-hmm. unintentionally. An addiction is slightly different. Rather than a focus on ritual, an addiction is about a mental escape from reality. Obsessive and addictive behavior behavior can be commingled rather easily. By recognizing what an obs- what is obsessive and what is addictive, however, you can go back to each individual route and address the underlying problem. The rest of this article talks about therapy can be very beneficial. There are different types of therapy like CBT therapy, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy mm. um, to address obsessive compulsive disorder, and also to address addictions. Now, we're going to talk about addictions more broadly today. Let me hand my computer over here to Jordan no more. And um, let's see. Uh, I, th- I think with with the questions that we're going to deal with today, we'll talk about alcohol and substance abuse, but we'll also talk about the broader addictions. Before yeah. we get into that, though, like I think one of the reasons that minimalism was appealing to both of us is it was helping us, in a way, curb our addictions or really get these superfluous things out of the way. Or maybe it's maybe it's a matter of like getting rid of the addictions and bringing in obsessions, maybe? Uh, well, there are different types of obsessions, right? Healthy uh, uh, obsessions. Like, I get obsessed mm-hmm. with writing and mm-hmm. And and for me, uh, I think love is one half passion, one half half um, obsession. Yeah. But it has to be the the sort of healthy obsession, and and that equation works when you flip it around as well. Passion is one half love, yeah. one half healthy obsession. So the uh, to say healthy obsession, it seems a bit redundant because obsession by definition is something that is. Uh, healthy it's, it's healthful at least not, not necessarily it's ritualistic in a way so so uh, obsession itself is is bipartisan in this case right okay. it it can be healthy just like it's like saying food mm-hmm. there's some terrible food out there that's going to kill us and give us butt cancer yeah um, there are other foods that are going to nourish our bodies, make us energetic, make us feel like our best selves, and prevent butt cancer. <laughs> and prevent butt cancer. But see, but see, when it get, but when an obsession, uh, when an obsession turns unhealthy, uh-huh. that's when it becomes an addiction. It uh, usually that is the case, yeah, because um, an obsession be- turns ritualistic, or or just become we become dependent on it. alcoholism, which I've had a lot of experience with. Uh, personally, not I'm not an alcoholic. Well, actually, I probably am an alcoholic. I've never had a drink in my life mm-hmm. because both of my parents were alcoholics, and I saw the the extreme. And they were extreme alcoholics, and right. not even functioning alcoholics, and it, it ruined their lives. and And I saw that happen. And and for me, I saw the that ritual turned in it devolved into it wasn't even a ritual anymore. It was just an everyday all waking hours occurrence yeah. until they were both dead. Well, let's talk about like writing. So you're obsessed with writing. Yeah. But let's say that you were writing this morning mm-hmm. and you were getting so obsessed with it that you were like, you know what? I'm not going to leave this room until this is done. Right. And you called Jordan and Sean and I, and you're like, sorry guys, cancel on the podcast, cancel everything today. I've got to finish what I'm writing. Right. And then like, you don't leave your room for a week until yeah. you finally. So is that, does, is at that point, is it an addiction? I think so. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I think because if we go back to that initial definition from the NIH, Addiction is the condition of being addicted to a particular substance thing or activity. Mm-hmm. Writing would be an activity in this case, despite harmful consequences. Right. And so when you start neglecting everything else, now now for us, we were we were actually neglecting the most important things in our lives, mm-hmm. the our health, our relationships, our creativity. Mm-hmm. So I was neglecting writing for a long time. Now my drug of choice was consumerism, mm-hmm. also sort of status and achievement and success. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, accolades it's a weird thing to like want 
you know, trophies or whatever, whatever the equivalent of trophies are. In our consumer culture, the trophies are often the trinkets or the objects that we're able to acquire with the money, which is the barometer of of success mm-hmm. often in our culture. Yeah. Um, and now there's this new barometer as well in, in the world of social media. It's uh, it's social media clout that becomes something that we become addicted to. It's like, mm. like oh, wow. And the weird thing is, you know, you and I will sometimes joke with each other about this. Like, oh, now I have, now we have, you know, 300 followers on x platform i guess i'm allowed to be happy now like this is the key to happiness of course it's not though because Mm -hmm. then you see the person with half a million or a million or 10 million or 50 million followers and you feel inadequate so we get addicted to the comparison we get addicted to the success or the perceived success so could social media be a healthy obsession Yes, I, I think so because it's a vehicle, right? Mm-hmm. And I think I think a lot of the times you and I we have a very deliberate way of how we use social media. In fact, we hired Jessica so that she could help us be deliberate with how we are using social media. We use it as a platform to do two things. One is to broadcast a message that we find will add to the greater good. So we're we're trying to add value to other people's lives. We want mm-hmm. to add to the greater good, but also we want to interact with people as well. And so mm-hmm. we use social media to interact in a positive way not to not to interact with the trolls or or to uh fuel to feed the trolls fuel the fire of outrage uh because that that can be the unhealthy side of it we can get addicted to the oh well, i'm gonna get you back or whatever there's some people who do it really well i think chris D'Elia, he has a really fun time mm-hmm. um feeding the trolls and then subsequently killing them killing mm-hmm. the trolls mm-hmm. you know uh with his with his words but he's he that's his art form in a way mm-hmm. um and, and and so yes, it can be it can be addictive or it could be a, a healthy obsession. Now for you and I, you know, for me, consumerism was the the drug of choice. Um, for my 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 parents, their drug of choice was was alcohol. Yeah, my drug of choice was drugs. <laughs> <laughs> my drug of choice was drugs of choice. Yes, <laughs> and and those became not just physically addictive, because they certainly were. I remember you going through withdrawals, Mm -hmm. but also psychologically addictive. Like, I need this in order to get through the day or to get through this relationship, get through this job, Mm -hmm. get through this interaction, get through this day of meetings. And it became this sort of psychological addiction as well. And and that's the, the dangerous side of of substances that are addictive is they're both chemically addictive yeah and and psychologically addictive yeah Yeah, that's dangerous